the Bible teaches us that we should live a life of gratitude, that we should be thankful to God no matter the circumstance. I try to live a thankful life regardless of what's going on. But you know, sometimes the world can make maintaining a thankful heart a difficult thing to do. My question is, how can I honor God more consistently? I've got a great life. I've been blessed with so many wonderful people and things, and I truly am thankful for everything. It's just that sometimes I don't show it. In fact, I'm not even really sure I know how to show it. I'd like to know what a life of gratitude really looks like. Thankfulness. I usually feel too overwhelmed to tap into that. Whenever I seem to get my feet back on the ground, there's just a whole new wave of challenges that hits me, and it's so draining. Gratitude isn't really on my radar when it feels like things are falling apart. What I'm wondering is, how do I become grateful? To be honest, I probably complain more than I'm grateful. I just feel kind of bombarded by society, like it's consistently reminding me what I don't have. It's easy to get distracted and lose track of what I do have. So where do I start? I guess I start here. Lord, please teach me to respond to whatever I encounter, good and bad, from a place of gratitude towards you. Lord, I really do want to be grateful to you, but I don't know how. I need you to show me what it looks like. God, please help me. It's so hard to be thankful when I'm facing these challenges. I need you. God? Can you help me recognize the good things in my life? Please, God, teach me how to live a life of gratitude. Personal growth and gratitude. That's what we're talking about today. And just as the video that you just watched, um, many times we feel gra grateful, we feel thankful, and sometimes we don't say it. Uh, sometimes there's so many things happening in a negative way that we don't even feel grateful. And so um, today we're going to uh, look at this in a different kind of way. Uh, I, I hope that my my goal and my trust is that this message will add some value to you uh, this week and for the rest of this year. Because when we talk about gratitude in 2020, um, many of you are probably like me. You probably feel like, man, there's not a whole lot to say thank you about, whether I'm thanking God or anyone else. There's so many negative things that happened this year. I mean, there's a lot of sadness, a lot of fear with the pandemic and anxiety and uh, depression, even loss of loved ones, all kinds of things, loss of income, loss of control of anything, loss of health, um, just, you know, just too much. It just seems to be too much. And, and we've uh, just a lot of losses. And so when we look at uh, gratitude, we want to look at it from the perspective of how gratitude is incorporated with all of these things, not that you ignore these things, not that you ignore the lost loved ones, not and ignore the loss of income. It's all true. Your feelings are real, and we need to acknowledge our feelings and know what we are feeling. At the same time, we need to realize that gratitude has a place uh, in our lives and a place in our in our daily activities. When you look at gratitude, it's it's an internal reflection on what someone else has done. And even if you recognize that God is at work in your life and you recognize that it's God doing something or someone else does something for you, then we are, that's, that's a part of gratitude. But another part of gratitude is that external expression um, where you actually, what you're reflecting on, you're expressing back. And that that's the that's the whole work of gratitude. When you reflect on what someone has done for you that is good, 
and then uh, you express that back externally, that's the process of gratitude. And that includes both to God and to people. A lot of times uh, we as Christians, and I know the way I grew up, you know, um, we would always thank God. And even when we thank God, we, we looked at it as being like part of a praise and worship service. It's, it's not like where we live the life of gratitude. We wanted to go to church so that we could be thankful. But what we're talking about is a lifestyle of gratefulness. It's a lifestyle of gratefulness to God. And it's also a lifestyle of gratefulness to people because God created people and God created relationships. And that's the whole purpose of, of relationship and re purpose for people is relationship. So let's look at this word gratitude here. Gratitude is a feeling of being thankful we're, we're, and also being ready to show that in appreciation. So first of all, you're feeling thankful uh, and you are ready to show it. Not, not just feeling thankful and not saying anything about it, but feeling thankful and you are ready to show that you are grateful. And so gratitude is more than just being thankful. It includes actions and those are actions of, of kindness. And so in, in this series that we're looking at today, it's not about trying to get you to feel grateful. It's not about trying to tell you that you should be grateful and thankful for what you have, uh, even though you're feeling down and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed because of all of the things that's going on, especially this year for 2020. Uh, you know, how many of you are ready for 2020 to be over and gone? Uh, and, you, you know, a lot of us will probably raise our hands and say, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for 2020 to be gone. Uh, you know, we'd, we'd raise our hands and say, please be, you know, I'm ready for 2021. The, the only problem with that, and much of the problem with that, is that we really don't know what 2021 is going to bring in either. And so we have to have an attitude and we have to get a mindset that regardless to what comes, we can, we can live through this and we can realize and recognize, you know, our own feelings because our feelings are real and uh, they should be acknowledged. Your feelings should be uh, valued, whatever your feelings are. We should, dis we should not discount the feelings. But what we look at, what we're talking about this week, we're talking about, um, th and I'm going to give you the challenge early. This week's challenge is about the benefit of, of incorporating gratitude into your daily activities. It, there's a benefit to gratitude, and it's a benefit to expressing gratefulness. It's a benefit to reflecting, uh, especially when things are bad, especially when there's issues in health and death all around us, loss of income, jobs and relationships, and pandemic anxiety, and all of these things. There's a benefit to reflecting, and there's also a benefit of expressing. And so we want to look, I have a question for you as I usually do. And that is, how can the attitude of gratitude benefit me when I'm experiencing all these different losses that we just talked about? How can just having an attitude, and, not, and it's not like just, you know, saying thank you and all these things are still buried in your mind and all these things are still happening around you. And you it's not like you're faking and you're pretending that these things aren't happening. There's a way to um, to embrace what's happening all around you, whether it's sad, losses. We can still embrace all of that and at the same time have an attitude of gratitude so that we can experience what, what, what the way God wants us to experience these losses and all of these things. So this is a way uh, how we should experience losses, um, whether it's a bad year like we're having now or any time in your life. And so let's jump right into some scripture here where uh, Paul is talking to the church at Thessalonia, or Thessalonica, well, where he's saying here, and many of you, you've seen this verse, whether in the King James Version or uh, some other version, but Paul is saying here, be thankful in all circumstances, or I believe the King James say, be thankful in all things. Um, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Um, we belong to Jesus and God's will 
for us is to be thankful. Now, how many of you grew up listening to this, um, you know, and hearing this over and over, especially if you were in church, you know, we, we, and we'd always say, you know, or you'd hear someone else saying to you, you know, be grateful for what you have. One of the songs that uh, I believe it was Tremaine Hawkins uh, in, back in the 80s or 90s, uh, probably 80s, <laughs> uh, that was singing, Be Grateful. We used to, our choir used to sing that song, Be Grateful for what God has done for you, and we need to think about what God has done. And, and, and those are all true, but how do you do that? You know, you don't just stop doing and stop thinking you know, and you, there's a way to recognize what God has done at the same time while you still embrace the things that's happening in your life. And so when, when, when Paul said here, be thankful in all circumstances, let's break this down a little because a, a circumstance is, is, is something that surrounds you. It's, it's a surrounding condition. When you look at the etymology of the word circumstance, it comes from the word circle and stance where stance has to do with a uh, uh, Latin word stare, stare, which has to do with stand. And so it's all about what's going on around you. And so when we look at all the things that's going around, uh, going on around us, those are the circumstances. That's what's actually happening. I want to bring your attention to not just the negative things that's happening around you, because negative energy is not the only energy that surrounds you. When, when Paul said, be thankful in all circumstances, th we have to recognize there are other circumstances around us uh, in addition to the negative circumstances. So be thankful in all circumstances. He's not just saying be thankful in the bad times, but he's saying be thankful. So cultivate an attitude of gratefulness in all circumstances. Remember all circumstances. Bad news is not the only news. We have to learn to be grateful and learn to be thankful in all circumstances. And so let's back up here and see what Paul is using to build up to this point, because this is, this is getting to a point in, in a letter that he's writing uh, to the people at Thessalonica. Uh, this was a church that Paul, Paul started this church Basically, when he had preached in Philippi last week, when we left and we talked, we were talking about all the different things in Acts and how, um, you know, diversity, how the Holy Spirit is creating a whole spirit of diversity and what God wants in the earth is diversity. Well, we, we kind of left that series with Paul uh, getting involved on the scene now uh, as someone who used to persecute the church, but now he's actually helping to build the church. And so here in Thessalonica, he had he had preached there for really he only had, had only about three weeks that he had where he could preach to them, and then he was moving on. So this was a young church. He had left it, and he had sent uh, Timothy. Remember also from the series before we see we talked about where Timothy was Timothy's father was Greek, so these weren't all Jews. Timothy's father was Greek, and his mother was a Jew, and Paul took Timothy with him to all these uh, Gentile locations. And so this is one of those locations where he's telling Timothy, I want you to pastor this location. And so, and then he, Timothy is there pastoring and getting all this information. So this letter that we're looking at today in first Thessalonians is Paul's first letter back to the people of Thessalonica after hearing what Timothy told him about the people. And so he, they, Timothy's really given him some good news, but obviously he's given him some things um, of what's going on that Paul need to say the things that he's saying. So why does Paul need to say these things to the people uh, based on what Timothy has said? So let's take a look here at the verses. Uh, back in, we're going to jump down to or up uh, from 18 to 11, where in First Thessalonians, where Paul says, so encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. So Timothy had already told him that they're doing a great job of encouraging each other. And so Paul is just going, he's starting to dig in. He's going to, you know, tell them some great things and tell them some things that they need to be doing. So he said, so encourage each other and build each other up. These are great things. And we, we could take some advice from Paul here 
we need to learn to encourage each other and to build each other up. Uh, and and uh, Thessal Thessalonians, the, you know, the people at Thessalonica, in their case, Paul is saying to them, you're already doing this. I already know you're already doing this because Timothy has told me that you're doing this. But I want us to realize what's happening here. Look at where Paul is putting the focus. The focus and the attention is on people. So he's saying, encourage one another, build one another up as you're already doing. This is great. And, and, and as he's, you know, he's starting to build up to where we just started at. When he says, focus on people, he's saying, build these people up, building them up. So let's look at what's going on, why Paul is saying that he needs to, that he, they need to do this. He, so he goes on, he says, dear brothers and sisters. Um, so again, He's not necessarily talking to just the leaders. He's talking to everybody in the congregation. This is a letter to a church. He said, dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work because uh, they work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. And, and you know, Timothy, all these people are brand new Christians. So even the leaders are brand new because this is a new church. And so Paul, as I said, spent about three weeks starting this church and he was gone. And now you got all these new Christians and some of them are leaders, new leaders, because you know, who else, where are you, where else are you going to get leaders from when everybody's new? And so he's looking at all of these things that are new at a brand new church. And he's saying to them, take a look at your leaders and then also show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peaceably with each other. So here, Paul is setting some groundwork. He's saying, you know, recognize those who are in leadership. Love on them because they love you. They're giving you what God has given them. And then he says, live peaceably with each other. Live peaceably with one another. Let God's peace rest and let God's peace be that which guides you and guards your heart. So here he said, brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. So now he's starting to dig in a little bit because obviously Timothy had told him that some people were lazy. Some people were not doing what they needed to do. Some people weren't doing um, what was required of them. And he said here, brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. So he's got something for uh, uh, several different classes of people here. He said, warn those who are lazy. And then he said, encourage those who are timid. So you, he's so we're not throwing anybody away. We're not getting rid of anybody. We are building up everybody, even the ones who are lazy. We're building them up. And so then he says, those who are timid, encourage those who are timid. Encourage them. You know, when we look at the word encourage, um, when I grew up, I used to hear this a lot. You know, you'd, you'd go to church and you'd hear someone always telling you, be encouraged. If you If you had something going on in your life, something negative going on in your life or where people knew that you were having a tough time or, or whatever was going on. Uh, a lot of times people didn't know what to say, but they would always say, always say, just be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged. Um, that's not encouraging. To tell someone to be encouraged is not encouraging. When we look at the word encourage, it actually means to uh, put courage in or to inspire courage from the inside. Courage is something that any individual has to do themselves. Even God doesn't give you courage. Courage comes from within you. So if you're going to encourage someone, what you have to do is cause them to recognize their own strength, recognize their own gift, recognize what's already on the inside of them. Help somebody to recognize that they've got more going on and more for them than what's against them. Helping them to see that because obviously they don't see that or they're not looking at it or they're looking past it. So to encourage someone is to help them to look at and see the great things that they're doing, even though they are, you know, when, when, when negative things are happening to you, you don't, you, you, it's hard to focus on the things that are, that you've done well. And so when you encourage somebody, you are actually bringing things to their attention, bringing things within their view, bringing things within their eyesight of the things that they have done that's great and that they can do. So Paul is saying to these people, encourage those who are timid. And as he already said, warn those who are lazy. Then he goes on to say, take tender care of those who are weak. You've got some people who are just weak. He's saying, be 
tender with them. Be go easy with these people. So you can't treat everybody the same. You got lazy people. You got to treat them one way. You warn them. Um, you got some timid people who are shy and you encourage them. You help build them up. And then you take real tender care of those who are weak. Um, and then he says, be patient with everybody. So he's building this up to a point where he's saying that, you know, um, warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid, um, be patient with everybody and t take ten be tender with those uh, who are weak, but be patient with everybody. And then he goes on to say this, see that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. So when he says to each other, he's talking about uh, the people in within the church that they're talking about. But then look at what else he says to all people. So he's talking to church people and he's telling them how to respond and react to church people, but also how to respond and react to all people. So he says, see that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Do that which is good. Now, he, now he's starting to get into the attitude thing that he's saying and how you can do this. He says, always be joyful. You know, how do you be joyful always? Um, joy, you know, is different than happiness. Ha happiness depends on something happening. But joy is just like gratitude is from the inside. It's where you are uh, reflecting and you re recognize um, when I say reflecting, it's reflecting on things in the past, but also present and future. When you when you can look at what you have, but not just the things that you see in front of you. See, joy has to do with um, what you know. You know, when you know something, even though you may not see it and others can't see it and they wonder why you are so happy, it's because of what you know on the inside. Joy has to do with the knowledge of what you have that's positive, even though that's not what's out front right now. And so always be joyful is what he's saying. Always be joyful. Always plan on having some joy. And that is always plan on and look at what's happening in your life that can bring you joy. Then he goes on to kind of explain how this has to happen. He says, so always be joyful. But then the next verse, he says, Never stop praying. Never stop praying. Uh, King James Version says, says pray without ceasing. Never stop praying. Never stop praying. What is Paul saying here when he's telling us to never stop praying? Um, one of the things that Paul is not saying is he's not commanding his audience to recite prayers all day. That's not what he's talking about. He's not saying go around you know, with your lips moving and nobody can hear you all day and people see you. Uh, he's not saying um, recite prayers and do all this stuff all day long. What Paul is urging us to do and urging his, his audience here to do is to develop the kind of relationship with God as a father. And see, that's that was different for these people. It was different for the Jews even it was and especially these Gentiles that they were talking to. He's urging them to develop the kind of relationship with God as a father. When, I, when we look at the Jews and the, the Jewish culture, they grew up knowing that God was a creator, relating to God as a creator. They related to God as the creator of all things. They related to God as uh, the supplier of all their needs. They related to God as the, the healer, uh, they related to him as the one who brought them victory in their battles. He, they, related, they related to God in all of these different ways. As a matter of fact, in the, you know, in the Jewish culture, they had different names for all of these things. But what Paul is saying here, he's saying, recognize God as your father. When he's, when he's saying, be thankful for all things, and when he's saying, this, the kind of relationship that he's talking about when he says never stop praying, he's saying, look at God as your father and never leave that relationship. 
always recognize that God is your father and always have an open relationship with your father. And just as an example here, let's look at, let's just break away from Paul a second here and look at what Jesus said when he, when one day Jesus was praying and um, he was obviously praying in a way that these Jewish boys that, you know, young men that he had recruited to be disciples, you know, they didn't pray like this. And, and so he said, they, he was praying and when he got done praying, they said to him, uh, Jesus, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples. You know, teach us to pray. And so w when he said to them, what he said to them is this. And take a look here in Luke, Luke, the 11th chapter. He said to them, when you pray, say. So when you pray, this is what you say. The first thing he said is when you pray, say, Father. Say Father. So recognize God as Father. Jesus called God Father. None of the Jews had called God Father before this. They didn't recognize and they didn't relate to God as their Father. And so Paul is saying here, in order to have joy always, in order to pray always, I'm saying that you recognize that God is your Father and this is the kind of relationship that you have with your father. Um, when you pray, say, Father, and then hallowed be thy name. And then he goes on, in other words, recognizing that uh, you are my father, but I also recognize all these other things that you are to me and how powerful you are as the creator of the world and the creator of the universe. But all of this, what Jesus is saying here is when you pray, have relationship, have relationship respond uh, in relationship. See, relationship is, is what he's asking them is to feel the need of turning to God when things are good, feel the need of turning to God when things are bad, feel the need of having God in your life, in your daily activities. And so all of this is what Paul is using to build up to, <coughs> excuse me, to build up to this first verse that we looked at earlier, which is the 18th verse. And so let's look at that verse again. He said, be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you to be thankful in all circumstances. You see, uh, thankful, thankful is being thankful is a part of gratitude. But let's break this down here. See, gratitude is, it is the power of your own reflection, not somebody else remembering for you. That's why, you know, when, that's why when, um, when someone else is trying to in, encourage you, um, it's, there's no power in what they are saying. The power is when you reflect, when you remember. Gratitude is the power of your own reflection, not someone else remembering for you. When someone else is remembering for you, sometimes that can get on, that can get on your nerves because they, they have the attitude of saying, just be grateful. God's been good to you, you know, um, and, and that, that, that can make you want to just push people away and tell them to move away because gratitude is the power of your own reflection. Gratitude really happens, it, you know, it starts off in a quiet time where you're starting to reflect on you recognize some good things that happen, even though you may not have recognized them as being good when they did happen. So gratitude is the power of your own reflection, not somebody else remembering for you. See, the attitude of gratitude is it is also not the acceptance of the status quo. See, I, when people say be grateful for what you've got, in a way, it sounds like they're saying, and we've looked at that, especially, you know, the way I grew up in church. It meant it also, I took it to mean, you know, stop wanting so much, stop desiring so much, start looking for all these great things. The attitude of gratitude is not just saying you got to accept things the way they are, be grateful and stop, you know, looking for more. Uh, reminds me of, I think it was an AT&T commercial where this little girl was saying, you know, I, I want more, I want more. And so we, it's okay to want more, but studies have shown 
that uh, I want to show you this. Studies have shown that the possibility of gratitude acting as a form of complacency. When we think we need to be grateful, we get complacent with what we have because we think that's what being grateful is. See, being grateful, and a lot of us, we did this even in the middle, you know, even in the middle of uh, with different things, like uh, with inequality. We live in a, a, a time now where some people, even African-American people are saying that we're at a period of time where we just need, we need to be grateful for what we've got. We've come a long ways, and that's true. We've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go uh, for equality. But some people are saying just be grateful for what you've got and stop talking about it. Don't, don't even bring it up. Well, gratitude is not just accepting inequalities. You can be grateful for what you have and be grateful for how, how far we've come. And at the same time, it's still okay to want more of what God has promised you. I want all of what God has promised me, and I hope you do too. So being grateful, we want to show you how to be grateful and still want more. You know, um, so the, one of the questions that is, how do you do that? How to be grateful and still want more? It's okay to want more. It's okay to do that. See, great gratitude uh, has been discovered to be uh, just not some passive emotion. I think that's how we've looked at it. It's just being passive um, and, you know, it's an emotion that you feel and it's passive. There's no there's nothing aggressive about it, nothing active about it. But a a gratitude is actually an a it's, it's energy. It's a force. Gratitude is at work from the inside. It's a force that works from the inside. And it can lead you to become better, better at whatever. Just fill in the blank. It, you, it, gratitude will help you be a better father if you, are, if you learn how to be grateful, It'll, to be a better friend, to be a better leader. If you are, you know, um, a, a boss, if you got a business, it'll help you to be better just by practicing being grateful. A better husband. A, a better wife, a better, a better, you know, nurturer, a, be, a better teenager, a better child, a better son, a better daughter. Uh, the gratitude it will help you to be better at whatever it is that you're doing. So I want to jump into our challenge for today and, and show you how I believe that God wants us to do this and we can begin to work on this. And I broke this into you know, several different sessions so that I'm not trying to cram so much into one session because we need to work on this and we need to do this. This is something that we need to do. As I said, gratitude is about actions of kindness, not just not just thinking, but also actions uh, at, at, of being kindness. So let's look at the, let's look at the challenges here. Your challenge is to approach uh, this year in holidays, you know, and this is a time of the year where we're focusing on being grateful on Thanksgiving, but also Christmas. Um, you know, a lot of times at, at, at Christmas time, we are, you know, well, let me say this, because this year for Christmas, it's going to be different for a lot of us. You know, things are a lot of different. There, there are a lot of people who do not have the money they had, do not have access to the things that they had. Um, there, are, there are people who are hurting uh, just because of the pandemic, because of the loss of jobs, the loss of business, the, the loss of loved ones. The, there are a lot of losses. And so our challenge this year, especially from now to the end of this year and going into 2021, is to have a genuine sense of gratitude towards God, but also a genuine sense of attitude towards each other, toward other people, where we are showing great that we are grateful for what people have done. We are grateful for who people are to us and what they've done in our lives. So this, this week's challenge is about um, the benefit of Gratitude. It's about the benefit of incorporating gratitude into all of your daily activities, everything that you do on a daily basis. How do you incorporate gratitude into the things that you do? That's what this week is all about. So 
the way I want to do this <coughs> is, and I'm going to show you my example, but this is what we want to do. And this is just the introduction to this series. But this is what I want to do. We want to invite you to start a list of seven words. And I just picked seven words describing what made you grateful in 2020. Because there's so much that we can think of in 2020 that just went wrong, um, you know, uh, with with our children, with our family, even as I said before, losses, things that just you didn't expect. You know, one of the things that I wanted to do this week, and I'm going to do it and, and share with you uh, for next week, because next week we're going to talk about gratitude triggers. But one of the things that I'm going to use in doing that is every year in, the, in January, Thomasine and I, we sit down and we go through our goals for the year. We set, set up what we want to accomplish. So I'm going to share with you some of the things that we said we wanted to do. And you, and you can probably reflect on some of the things that you believe that you were going to do and that you wanted to do for 2020. But you, you know, based on what's happened in 2020, a lot of things that we wanted to do and the goals that we had did not happen. Uh, and as far as we can see, still won't happen <laughs> before the end of this year. And so I want you to make a list of seven words describing what, made you grateful. So now you got to do some thinking and what made you grateful in 2020. You can start all the way back from January and just go all the way through and you'll have a whole list uh, of things. Uh, but here's, here's what we want to do when you do this. So please share your list, you know, with us when you, you'll know, create this list. And I'm going to show you what I mean by seven words, create this list and then email it to us at, at mail at gtmusa.org. And then just use gratitude as your subject line in your email. So we'll know that these all have to do with this assignment. And, and as we work on this together, and what I'd like to do is I'm going to collect all of these. And I know many of us will probably have a lot of the same things, but I, I want to collect all of the different things that we are grateful for and then share these as we go throughout the series and especially at the end where we look at wh what we are all grateful for that God has done. And so here's, here's an example of, of some, a few of my seven uh, words here. One is, this is the beginning of my gratitude list. I am very glad to be alive and healthy. I mean, that's seven words. But this year, looking at 2020, I am very glad to be alive and and healthy. Um, there have been several couple of times where at least once at work where they thought I uh, was exposed to some people that had uh, that had been, you know, that actually had COVID. Um, and um, I had to go get tested and ended up testing negative. And so I am very glad uh, there are some people that I work with that are not at work anymore. There are people that you know that are dead and gone. There are people that we all know that's been affected. So I am very glad to be alive and healthy. And if you count those words, that's seven words. So we want to, seven words is helping us to be creative, but also helping us not to have a very long sentence. So here's, here's my uh, second thing here. I, I'm also Sunday mornings watching your comments online. <laughs> that's one of the things that I'm grateful for especially this year, because I, I can't see you on Sunday mornings. But I am very grateful for watching your comments online, the things that you that you're saying, even like right now, I can look at your comments. Someone said, uh, you know, I'm grateful for my for my pastors. Uh, and someone's saying, you know, I love this, you know, family and friends also sending you love from your sister, all of these things. And this well, that was to Sharina and all these, but Olivia saying grateful for 47 years of marriage. Wow. We're, we're excited for you, Olivia. Amen. Uh, that's a, that's a hand clap right there. But all of these things that we're grateful for, um, as I said, Sunday mornings, watching your comments online. Here's another thing I'm grateful for watching my wife smile and break out laughing. And so I'm just putting together seven words for some things that I'm grateful for, but I love to see Thomasine smile and then I love to see her break out laughing. And there have been a lot of things happen this year 
where that smile would be turned into an upside down smile or a frown and there would be no one laughing. But at the same time, I believe I'm, I'm focusing on the things that will build up this gratitude list. So watching my wife smile and break out laughing is one. And then I'm going to share uh, another one with you. Uh, experiencing my children and grandchildren on Zoom because this year I've seen less of my children than ever before, less of my grandchildren than ever before. Uh, experiencing, but experiencing them on Zoom is still something that I am very grateful for. I'm also very grateful for, this is the last one I'll share. I'm also very grateful for experiencing my children and grandchildren uh, from outside. You know, we've we've uh, we we we've come up now, especially earlier in the in the in the fall and before it got too cold. Uh, we we would just hang out on the deck outside. Uh, you know, at least they could come out, come come over, and we talk on the deck and those kind of things. But but now, uh, like I got a text from a um, middle son says, you know, I'm about to drop by and do a garage drop off. So that means that we're meeting in the garage. We're in one side of the door and they're on the other. Well, we're we're doing this to be safe and protect each other from each other because we're all with different people all week. We don't know. We may be related. And that's 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 one of the things that I think um, we don't get when it comes to this virus. We think that because you're my son or because you, I'm your dad or because we're related, if we don't live in the same household and we go to different places all day, you work in one place, I work in another place, we're exposed to different people, then we possibly could have uh, tra you know, contracted the, the, the virus and don't even know it. And it's, it, the virus doesn't care whether you're related or not. So we have to protect each other and, and make sure that we are safe. So uh, we've been meeting in the garage, you know, we've been meeting outside. Uh, for example, you know, Saturday a week ago, I did a wedding and this was just, just something funny that I thought of that happened that I'm, it doesn't fit the seven things, although I've said experiencing my children and grandchildren from outside. Well, a week ago, I performed a wedding. It was a private wedding. Um, because of COVID, but I performed the wedding and I come home. I still had on my tuxedo and I was all dressed up and, um, and, and, and Darren and the kids, Darren and, you know, Katie and, 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 and uh, Charlie came by. And when Charlie got out of the car and saw me with all this stuff on, uh, she just looked at me and she said, uh, why are you so handsome. <laughs> I didn't know what was about to come out of her mouth. But then I was like, oh, yes, I love her. This is this is my granddaughter. She thinks I'm handsome. But anyway, it just these kind of things that we, you know, this helps me to build my list. This helps me to be grateful. And so you can also download this. And I'm going to make sure that you have access to this. If you go to our Facebook.com groups page, and, and I'm just reminded as I'm saying this, uh, I, next week I want to make sure that I make a way for everybody to get this, whether you're on Facebook or not. Because I realize if you are not on Facebook, then you may not have access uh, to this. And so uh, we're going to put it on our website and make sure that you have access to where you can get it, whether you have a Facebook account or not. But... Um, but download a copy from our Facebook groups page or someone else that has a Facebook account. Have them, you know, you, they can download it, send it to you, download it. You can print it. But use this to create some conversation about what we're doing here, about being grateful, being thankful. And next week we're going to talk about, um, you know, gratitude triggers. But go ahead and download this. And also remember... Um, as you make your list this week, and you can do a with you, you don't have to. You can do a week this this week. You can do a list. <laughs> you can do a list this week and next week as we go on. But as you think of these things, just email us at mail at gtmusa dot org your list, and uh, you can start that today. But we're going to start compiling these, put them together, and then we're going to share 
and allow this to be something that encourages us and is, encourages each w- w- where we can encourage one another by doing this. So this is what I have for you today and for us to get started on this week. And I am excited about this series. I'm excited about what this is going to do um, as we do this together. And we're going to figure out some ways so that we can uh, move through this together. So at this point, what I'd like to do is uh, pray for you and that you can, you know, be grateful. I'm going to come back and invite some people to take a step. But I want to pr- I want to pray right now uh, for you. And when we look at, you know, being grateful and, you know, this whole thing on personal growth and gratitude, that's the title of this series, personal growth and gratitude. And today we're just talking about the power of gratitude. And I want to pray for some people right now. Father, we thank you. Please bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you for this message today, uh, what Paul is sharing with the church at Thessalonica. Uh, We thank you that we believe that as we relate to God as our father, as we relate to God on on, on an ongoing basis, not just when we need things, not even when we just think of the great things and then begin to praise him, but throughout the day relating to him as our father, that we can be joyful always and that we can be thankful and and grateful always in every single circumstance, not necessarily for those circumstances, but in those circumstances, we can still be grateful and thankful to you. So I pray that we'll find a way this week to do this, find a way to even write some things down that'll be beneficial for some of the rest of us. And God, we honor you and give you praise for this in Jesus name. Amen.